Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's video we are going to create this website loader in Adobe XD. It's going to be super simple, so let's get started. Okay, so to get started here I have an artboard of 1920 by 1080 and this is the color of my artboard, so 262626. And by the way, you can get this practice file in my membership, link is going to be down in the description below. Membership contains all of the courses, digital design products, private access to the Facebook group, practice files for these YouTube videos, mentorship and much more. So if you're interested in content like that, make sure to check it out once again, link is going to be in the description below. Now to get started, what I will do first is to create a circle and I will give it, for example, 350 with 350, like that. Make sure it's in the center and I will give it a border color of 40, sorry, border uh, size of 40. I'll make sure to use this cap, so round cap, and I'll make sure to use this color, so A8, 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 like so, so nice little gray. And then I'll call this BG circle. Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, because I want to have four copies. So this is going to be circle one. This is going to be circle two. This is going to be circle three. And finally, this is going to be circle four. Now go ahead and group all of these, call it circles. And as you can see, I named this uh, default. So what I'm going to do is lower the opacity down of this circle to zero. And I need this background circle just to be able to navigate if some of these dots go out of the way. So I'm going to be able to quickly rotate them back into place. So what I'm going to do for these four, so one, two, three, four, is I'm going to use the border without any color. So I have my border size of 40. I have these settings right here that you can see. What I'm going to do for this first one is increase the gap to, for example, 1110, like so. And I'm going to get this circle, this dot. So why I need this background circle is to rotate these two. So I'm going to simply select number two and BG circle. And I'm going to position it, for example, right here. Then I'm going to use number three and BG circle and I rotate that to match my top circle, so number one, like this, and I'm going to come back to rotate number two a bit more like this, and finally I'm going to use number four and rotate it in the same direction, like I did all of the other ones, like so. Of course you can use these rotation settings if you want to, but I found manual work just fine. Of course you can click on your artboard, hover right here, and use one of these guides, just to make sure that your circles are in the center, and you can do so from the left hand side like this. As you can see, they are in a circle, so we can move on. What I'm going to do next is hit Control D on my artboard, rename this to spin, because I want them to be able to spin. So what I'm going to do is make this circle number one red, just so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use all of them and simply rotate it like this. Then I'm going to Control D. And from here on out, I want them to expand. So how I'm going to achieve that is actually really quite simple. So all I want to do is to uh, open them up right here. And first of all, let's rename this to expand, like so. And I want to select them all, like so, and hit right here to 200. What's that going to do? As you can see, this dash is going to expand, but because I kept the gap, we're still going to have these gaps in between. Of course, your results may vary, so make sure to play around with these settings. So if I selected dash and gap until you reach the final result. But if you follow my example, uh, which I'm showing you right here, there's a good possibility that you are going to achieve just that. So what I'm going to do next is hit Control D on this one, call it spin like this and I'm going to basically jump inside and reduce all of them to zero like so and then I'm going to rotate all of them like this control D this is going to be expand like so and I'm going to simply jump inside sorry I didn't write correctly so I'm going to jump inside of here expand all of them back to 200 like so and what I'm going to do next is basically move on once again. So hit spin like this. And basically you see the point we try to uh, rotate them back into position like in this. 
And finally, we can hit one more time and call it expand. And depending on how many times you do this, you are going to get different results, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So hit 200 right here, like so. And what I'm going to do now is I can rotate them like this, but I'm basically going to simply hide uh, this. So let's use this color and let's actually select it here. So it's a bit easier for us to change it. So click right here, then right here, because I want them all to have the same color, obviously, like so. And then I can move on and simply adjust all of them. What you can also do is select all of them and change the color, but because we have that background circle, it might disrupt things a bit. And now that we are done, what we have is two, four, six, seven R boards, as you can see right here. And now let's animate them. So what I'm going to do is go to prototype and select the entire artboard, drag this blue handle to here. What I'm going to do is use time. I'm going to use auto animate as my transition. And then destination, I'm going to use the spin, which is fine, ease in out. And I'm going to use 0.8 seconds, for example. And the only thing you need to do is simply connect all of them. So select the artboard, connect, select, connect, select, connect. Do that for all of them like this. And finally, this final one, make sure to bring it back to position here. And now when I hit preview, this is the result we are going to get. So let me select it, hit preview right here. So you can see they are rotating, expanding. When they come to the end, they are going to rotate back into position. Obviously, you can go ahead and add a certain text right here in the center, for example, loading or be a bit funny about it. For example, we are loading a robot or um, servers are firing up or something like that. Or you can include a text right here. You can use the mask. You can check my other uh, videos here on the channel about Adobe XD animation using masks. And then you can incorporate text with this spinner to achieve different results. Of course, you can even include numbers right here. So to go from uh, zero right here to 100 at the end of this animation and finally what i wanted to show you is this you can achieve completely different result by just using two of them for example so if i select the default and expand using my shift key and then select my alt i mean use my alt key drag them to here switch to prototype then click here and simply drag it to here you can see because i reduced the number of my artboards it's just going to expand collapse expand collapse so you can have this result if you want to or you can have this a bit more complex result so depending of how many of these you add then it's going to transition and give you other bits of animation finally if you want uh, to create additional um, spin outs or design or whatever then let's say that i want to click right here and then create my artboard so let's say 1920 this is going to be my website so instead of when I'm at the prototype, instead of it going here, I can simply go right here for this final one. And you can use auto animate, you can use dissolve, you can use whatever, and then you can use delay, for example, of, I don't know, one second, something like that. And then auto animate, or I can simply use, let's say transition, dissolve, is out 0 0.8 seconds. So let's check it out. Let's see, let's say that this is your website and let me expand it actually, just to give you the idea that this is your website. So when I click right here, it's going to transition, 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 and finally dissolve at the very end and come to your website. So if you want to use these as a transition to your website, then you can use that. Once again, this practice file is going to be in my membership. If you want, you can join. Link is going to be down in the description below so that you can practice for yourself with this and every single other practice file which is used here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and make sure to subscribe because I upload new videos every single week about Adobe XD, design, passive income techniques, motivations. I also do live streams and much more. So if you're interested in content like that make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video take care